Hi there, I'm Andrew Brown. Welcome to Real-Time Music and Sound with Pure Data. In this uh, episode, we're going to be looking at the live coding toolkit for Pure Data. This is the second in a series about the live coding toolkit. Live coding, of course, is the creation of and editing of uh, patches or code um, as part of performance, so typically done live on stage. In order to do that, um, we've created the live coding toolkit, which is a set of abstractions which uh, provide some high level um, objects that we can use to make our coding more efficient um, in pure data when we're doing live coding. You can download them from uh, the live coding toolkit uh, GitHub site, which is a screenshot of which is on stage on the um, stage on the screen. And then when you've done that download, you need to go to the PD preferences to the paths and make sure that the folder or the directory in which you've saved the um, life coding toolkit um, is in your path so that PD can see it. All right, let's get started on this. Um, in order to do um, a demo of the life coding toolkit, I'm going to um, do some things which are inspired by this um, performance by Andrew Sorensen, this live coding uh, keynote. Uh, Andrew is a virtuoso live coder, so this is a, a good test for the live coding toolkit. So um, in the demonstration that follows, I'm going to be mimicking some of the um, uh, practices that Andrew has uh, used in that particular performance. So in the live coding toolkit, we're going to um, start by using a tempo object to keep everything in sync. So 116 beats per minute, and we're going to get send out pulses at quarter of a beat. So it's basically 16th notes. And we start the tempo object with a toggle. Um, we'll start it for the minute and have a look what, what comes out the second outlet. Um, we'll see that we're getting um, an incremental count of the pulses as they go. So we're going to use that um, in order to keep things in sync as we go. So we're going to use a cycle um, object. This is one of the objects from the life coding toolkit. It takes an initial pitch and an initial velocity and an initial duration. Um, then we're going to send that out to um, the synth. This is also part of the live coding toolkit um, and it's a simple subtract synthesizer um, and I'm passing an argument 1000 for the low frequency cutoff. Then the live coding toolkit also includes this out um, object which uh, connects it to the DAC and adds a bit of reverb and a volume control. So if we connect this up you can hear that we've got this um, simple cycling through a single um, list of one pitch. <laughs> so it's just repeating over and over and over again. So we need to add some um, more pitches to it. So I'm going to create a list of pitches. Connect them to the pitch inlet. So we now have that list of pitches. Uh, to make it a little bit more interesting, I'm going to add a cyclic rhythm. So these are durations, numbers of pulses. That just gives it a little bit more of a interest. And I will introduce another new object from the live coding toolkit, and that's periodic. This creates a cosine wave of at a certain um, rate. In this case we're going to use eight steps. We're going to have a center value of 90 and we're going to have a deviation of 20. Um, this um, will be also triggered by that counter um, and then we're going to use this in the velocity inlet. So now you should hear that we've got some variation in the loudness of those notes. 
as well. So this is our, our first part. So I'm going to add a little, little bass part to that. We're going to put the bass part on the offbeat. Uh, so we'll use modulus to um, make sure we're on the offbeat. I'm selecting two. Um, then we're going to trigger a root note. It's just a constant pitch. Um, send that to another synthesizer. This is a simple two operator FM synth which is in the live toning toolkit called FM tilde. And then that goes to the output. And I might actually turn this up as well. Okay, so now we can take our counter, send it there. Make sure that goes to both sides of the stereo. Alright, so we can use a similar trick um, of using the modulo to um, select the downbeat. And we'll send this downbeat to um, some drums. So this is a simple drum synthesizer which is um, inside the live coding toolkit. Send that also to an out. Both channels. And then we can connect that up. Okay, so we've just got a kick drum going. Come back to drums in a little bit. Uh, so let's add a kind of melodic part. So we're going to use the periodic um, function abstraction that we used before for velocity, but now we're going to use it for a melodic contour. Uh, it's going to have 16 steps. It's going to have a center frequency of 67 and a range of an octave either side of that. Um, because I know that that's going to be repetitive and may not be all super interesting, I'm going to randomize those values using the RAND object from the Life Coding Toolkit with a center frequency and a deviation. In order that all of the notes which are randomized there um, are kept within a scale, I'm going to use a pitch quantize function from the Life Coding Toolkit called QUANT. Uh, and that will quantize everything to a C major scale. Then send that out to another one of the monophonic subtractive synthesizers um, and also to the outlet. Okay, um, let's so connect this up and then get it going. I'm going to use another periodic operator here to control the dynamics of this uh, synthesizer as well. Okay, spell periodic. Okay, so that will connect to the velocity inlet of that synth. there in that period. So let's go back to our drums I suggest and uh, we'll add some hi-hats in. In order to vary the volume of the hi-hats I'm going to use the RAND function. Um, we might make that only 30. The RAND uh, thing has several outlets. The middle outlet is a Gaussian distribution. We'll put that into the hi-hat level inlet. Um, that will be triggered from there and then we'll also trigger the hi-hats. So let's go back to our melody. We'll add a counter melody um, to that. Um, so I'm going to just mirror this melody um, in a kind of can canonic kind of way. So I'm going to 
defer, which is kind of like a delay um, of that part. It's become clearer maybe in a sec. And I also don't want to have everything repeat, so I'm going to use um, a gate object from the live coding toolkit, which if it was zero or one would be to stop and to start, but if it's in the center or when in between those two values, like 0 0.5, it's a probabilistic gate and it'll let through 50% of the, the notes. We're going to um, transpose them up a fifth so that they're both delayed and transposed. Um, and in order to make sure that they stay within key, I'm going to just redo the quantizing. Um, put them into an FM synth um, with some arguments this time. So a um, modulation index of three, carry a frequency modulator of one, an attack of 30 milliseconds, and a release of 400 milliseconds. Send that to our outlet. Okay, in stereo, and then we can connect this up. So we have all the parts running now. So now it's just a matter of uh, closing everything down. I'm going to use um, PD line object to create a volume ramp down to zero over 10 seconds. We'll use that for a couple of parts in a second. connect that to our drums and to our bass. In order to stop that melody, I'm just going to close that off. So we're back to the basic rhythm. And we can just let that fade out. can replace the pitch okay so we're done so in this video we've seen quite a few of the objects from the live coding toolkit um, periodic was new all the synthesizers drums synth and FM uh, were new quantize was new in this video gate and defer uh, were new and uh, so if this is your first one you may not have seen the other objects the tempo and the out and the cycle uh, which were featured in the first part of the um, other video okay have a go at doing that and i'll see you in another video